Hi, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Betway segment of Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. Mark, uh, the, this is the trilogy, the third fight. The first one was a draw. Um, Tyson was knocked down twice, but outboxed uh, Wilder. Controversy there. Draw. Next one, um, Tyson Fury battered him for seven rounds, six and a half rounds, and uh, the fight was, he knocked him down twice. He fell down twice, which speaks to his balance and the uh, burst eardrum. And then the fight was eventually mercifully stopped by, by the referee in the seventh round. What do you make of the third fight? Boom! <laughs> I think he's going to knock him out, Tyson Fury, and I want him to win. I love Tyson Fury. I think he's great for the sport. Yeah. And if you look at the, the first fight, Tyson Fury just said he got hit by the, the biggest punch ever been landed on him yeah. and after four counts he just decided you lie here as the gypsy king or you get up and he got up somehow made it through and uh, and that was the decisive kind of punch in terms of a draw because he had dominated that fight the second one he came in 20 pounds heavier said that he had changed his trainer he was going to attack him uh while dad said he's got a powder puff uh punch he could never knock him out he took the fight to him. I think he completely surprised Wilder last time. He did what he said he was going to do. Completely. And lent on him, six foot nine, all of him on Wilder the whole time. Uh, but confident that he could take the best punch that Wilder could throw because he got up from it when no one in boxing's history has got up from a punch like that from Wilder. He had knocked out 40 of the 41 people he had fought. So I think that confidence was there that he, like, th give me your best punch because I took it last time. But he shocked Wilder, uh, he batted him. The story was that he broke his, he, he burst his eardrum with one punch early on. He lost his balance. And, but it's been what happened post that was Wilder saying that he was drained from coming in the ring, carrying like 60 kilograms of kind of equipment in, in, in whatever outfit he had. Then he said that Fury had knuckle dusters in his gloves that made his, his punching power stronger. Then he said that his ring was working with Fury. That's why he's trying to throw in the thing. I think that's what's pissed. Fury off the whole time. Instead of saying, I took a beating yeah. and I'm coming back for you. Yeah. He's blamed everything. And I saw the interview yesterday when he, he called him trash. He called him garbage. He said, I thought you were a good family man. But what you've said post the fight mm. tells me I need to either knock you out or punish you over a few rounds before I knock you out. Well, there's been a complete denial in terms of maybe that is uh, Wilder's a reality that he actually believes what he's saying. Because there's serious allegations. I mean, if you, if, if you honestly believe that that was the case, then you would file, uh, you would, you would file charges or, or with, the, with the relevant bodies. No, and uh, when he had his uh, gloves laced up as well, uh, it, which ha it's the, the way the protocols are, <laughs> Wilder had his, one of his corner people was in there to check that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think Fury was just kind of taken aback by him the, the things that he said afterwards yeah. not acknowledging at any stage that he just got beaten yeah. uh, because he still claims fury fury can't punch uh, that he uh, he burst an eardrum early on and the kind of he lost his balance and he was so no he was winning the fight and he was annoyed with his with his corner uh, he fired the guy who threw in the towel who mercifully threw in the towel because he was about to get there could have been brain damage from that kind of yeah. beating he, that he was taking he, he looked he was bleeding from, 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 from his mouth, from his ear. From his nose. He, 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 I, I believe that, he, that, that, that his balance was, was, um, was ruined at some stage in the early part of that fight because he, he, he fell over twice in that fight or tripped over. He did, certainly didn't have... And, and I can tell you that referee was doing him a hell of a lot of favours during that fight as well. I mean, when he went down, he like basically instructed Fury to the corner. They gave him five counts warned him one time, then looked at him, and so then started counting. There was even a point deduction. Yeah, he, he deducted, I mean, he could have counted him at 15 in one of those, one of those uh, knockdowns. But he was, I mean, he knocked him, he knocked him down with a body blow yeah. as well. So what's interesting for this fight is that Fury's, the first fight, uh, the weight that Fury came in for the second fight was 20 pounds heavier yeah. and with a very different approach. And he's now coming in another 20 pounds heavier. So that's 40 pounds more in that first fight when he lost. And he believes that that extra weight is what helped him last time and it's going to help him again. But you also noted that just looking at Wilder, it looks like he's also bulked up for this fight. He has. There is no doubt about that. And, I, you know, you, know it's, it's always, you should always take with a pinch of salt the build up to these fights. You know, I look back at the Tyson Holyfield uh, uh, fights. And when you lose a fight, and it's arguably Fury won the first fight, 
Um, I don't know how a boxer comes back because they're two massive individuals, six foot seven versus six foot nine, you know, 268, 270 pounds versus, I think the Wilder looks at around 240 pounds. He's not, he's, he's no shrinking bothered himself. Um, but just how much damage has been done to his psyche? Because the one thing that, that, that I found very interesting about watching the, pre, the, the pre-match um, uh, barbs was, was uh, the, the love and all this talk about from, from Wilder about the love in his camp. And, and it, you know, it, it, I was seeing more of a TV evangelist than a boxer. Yeah, I, look, I mean, this was a guy that just, they, they, they revered him as people spoke about a young Tyson. If you went two rounds with him, you were lucky. Yeah. Because when, when he hit you, you just didn't get up. And then he went 12. Somehow, that fight went 12, that first one. Because no one thought that Wilder had the condition to go 12. And no one thought that Tyson Fury's jaw would take 12. Mm. Uh, so that was kind of, there were a lot of wild factors to that first fight. The second fight was just, you know, the one, the one criticism of Tyson Fury was, would he have the capacity to knock him out? Mm. Because he's just such a good boxer. And he showed he could do that. And um, the thing is, he's got incredible boxing skills. I watched a couple of his clips from some of his fights. Uh, if he's mentally switched on, I think he is. Uh, I think he'll give Wilder a beating. His dad had said that he was preparing at one stage for the Joshua fight. And then the court ruled that he had to fight yeah. uh, Wilder. And his dad, and he took the fight. And his dad said, it's the worst thing. You can't prepare for, for one fight and then go to another fighter. But then he got COVID. Mm-hmm. And the fight was postponed. And, and Wilder said he, he wanted to be ever had COVID. But I think it was to give him an extra six weeks to kind of change his whole battle plan and that kind of stuff. But he's got a strut. He's got a confidence. He's, he, he's the one who's gone to Las Vegas. He's gone to the States to say, I'll, I'll fight you in your country and I'll beat you there as well. He loves going there. He loves the, the hype that he gets, the energy he gets from the Americans. And I think the Americans love him as well. I mean, he is a character. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah. You know, it's, uh, someone said the other day, I said the Gypsy King, they said it's very offensive. I said, he calls himself the Gypsy King, I'm going with him, you know, so. <laughs> well, it's pretty difficult not to offend in this world, so I mean, yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I think it's, I, you know, it's, uh, the only way I see it going the other way is, is, is that Wilder connects him very early on and knocks him out. Mm. And I, I, I would be as shocked as Tyson Fury would be if it happens. I really have him to, to, to win and win comfortably. And further to your point, I think a lot of psychological damage was done uh, in that fight. And not because he lost, it's the way he lost. Mm. Uh, a guy who his whole career has beaten people up, mm. got a beating and he got a whipping of note. And how do you come back from that? Maybe through, through evangelists, through prayer, through whatever. But yeah, I'm going Gypsy King all the way. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go Gypsy King too, and I think it's going to be a knockout. And what are the odds? Um, for uh, unfortunately, for Gypsy King, ring is one point three six. So you got to bet. Um, you've got to bet a hundred rand to win thirty six, which is a bit too rich. Which a bit doesn't offer value for me. But from a, a TKO point of view or, or a knockout, I think you're looking at about one point six, one point seven. That's the bet I'll, I'll be making. And and Wilder, the odds on the, for those who are Deontay Wilder fans. <coughs> Uh, 3.45, so 100 rand will get you 345. But would you tell them to stay away? Well, uh, look, there's only one winner in this fight for me. Um, it's, it's, it's a gypsy king. And then, they can, then we can finish that one off. You can go and beat up Anthony Joshua as well, and then you can set, sail off into the sunset and uh, enjoy being the gypsy king and blow up by another 100 kilograms and really live his life nice. Exactly. Thanks, Thanks. Mark. Come Cheers, Kev. Cheers.